When Pope Benedict visited Washington, D.C. in 2008, there was joyful participation, closeness, and communion among Catholics in our nation's capital and the entire United States as 50,000 people prayed together at the Papal Mass at Nationals Park. Holy Father, welcome to Washington. It is my great joy and privilege to offer an enthusiastic welcome on behalf of all who gather at this Eucharistic liturgy. I greet you in the love and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ. You bring to us Christ and his gospel of love and hope. Most Holy Father, welcome. In the presence of the successor of Peter, who has come to confirm us in our faith, hope, and love, let us renew the profession of faith made at our baptism and recommit ourselves to love and serve faithfully God and our brothers and sisters in his holy church. I am particularly grateful to Archbishop Wall for his kind words of welcome. In the exercise of my ministry of successor of Peter, I have come to America to confirm you, my brothers and sisters, in the face of the apostles. In November 2010, hundreds of pilgrims from Washington, D.C. and surrounding areas returned a visit to the successor of Peter by sharing in Archbishop Worrell's elevation to the College of Cardinals. Il vincolo di speciale comunione e affetto che lega questi nuovi cardinali al Papa li rende, rende singolari e preziosi cooperatori dell'alto mandato affidato da Cristo a Pietro di pascere le sue pecore per riunire i popoli con la solicitudine della carità di Cristo. The Pontifical North American College is America's seminary in Rome. Men from all over the United States are prepared at the threshold of St. Peter for service as priests in their home diocese. It is also the alma mater of Cardinal Designate Worrell. On the eve of the 2010 consistory, 
more than 200 pilgrims from the Archdiocese of Washington gathered together for an evening of prayer with Eucharistic adoration and confession. Afterward, Washington Auxiliary Bishop Barry C. Nestout, along with 40 priests and several bishops, celebrated Mass. The entire assembly prayed for Cardinal Designate Worrell as he assumes his new responsibilities. We recall the, the reason that we're here. We pray for all those who are going to be elevated to the College of Cardinals, that the Lord might strengthen each one of them in their imitation of him, that they might lead us to imitate our Lord in his own suffering death and experience as well, his resurrection, the fullness of life in his presence. Following this prayerful evening in the chapel of the North American College, the pilgrims gathered for a joyous meal at Los Carponi Restaurant. A burst of applause and a warm standing ovation greeted Cardinal Designate Worrell as he arrived. The Cardinal Designate met with each pilgrim and thanked them for traveling all the way to Rome to be part of this great honor for the Archdiocese of Washington. To his surprise, a group of Washington seminarians came to the stage to serenade him with a song, sung to the tune of Dean Martin's classic, Volare. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for coming and enjoying uh, with, with the Archdiocese of Washington, uh, with the Diocese of Pittsburgh, and all those points in between. Thank you for, for being here so that we can celebrate together. God bless you. The red robe of a cardinal signifies his willingness to lay down his life for Christ as his successors have done since the election of St. Peter and all of the popes. He now assumes the special role of advising the pope and of serving the universal church. In the sad time of a pope's death, the cardinals also serve as the electors of a new pope. When Pope Benedict XVI announced the Archbishop of Washington's election to the College of Cardinals, Cardinal Designate Worrell turned to the tailor who prepared the vestments for his ordination as a priest in 1966, as well as his ordination as a bishop in 1986. The elderly but skilled craftsman decided to come out of retirement to help prepare the red robes for the elevation of his old friend, Cardinal Designate Worrell. There was so much excitement from the pilgrims that they were able to witness this great honor. It's a real honor to be here, especially uh, being from the Archdiocese of Washington and being here, uh, just such a rare opportunity to be here with our Archbishop who is about to become Cardinal, so we're very excited, very delighted. Oh, just magnificent today, fantastic, full of joy. It's a great day, and not just for Cardinal World, but for the Church of Washington in the nation's capital. It's a great day, we're full of excitement, and a great day to celebrate. At the November 20th Consistory, Pope Benedict XVI created 24 new cardinals from 13 countries around the world, including Washington's Cardinal Donald Worrell. 
Each cardinal knelt before the Holy Father to receive his red hat, signifying his service to the Pope and to the Universal Church. After the ceremony, Cardinal Wuerl spoke to reporters about the special bond that he and the church in Washington now have with the Pope. Well, thank you all for being here. This is an absolutely wonderful day. It's a glorious day. We had, as you could see, the Basilica filled with people who were here to support their cardinal, cardinals that have come from all around the globe to show the universality of the church and the Holy Father placing the red hat on each of the cardinals as an indication of that cardinal's special tie now to him. Every, every believer has a tie. Every Catholic has a tie to the Pope. But cardinals, because they're asked to work very, very closely with him, have a special bond. And that's what you witnessed today, the, the bonding the visible sign of that bond in the imposition of the hat. Yesterday you participated. At receptions that afternoon, Washington's new cardinal greeted pilgrims from home and from around the world. The next day in St. Peter's Basilica, Cardinal Wuerl and the new cardinals receive rings from the Holy Father. At this majestic liturgy, the Pope places the ring bearing the image of the crucified Christ on the fingers of the new cardinals as a symbol of their willingness to lay down their lives for Christ and as a sign of their bond to the Pope in service of the Universal Church.
Principe Anorum de Mano Petri, Novere Selezione Principis Apostolorum, Direzione Tuam Erga Ecclesiam Roborari. Benedict held a private audience for the new cardinals and the consistory pilgrims to offer them his apostolic blessing. Cardinal Donald William Rowe, Archbishop of Washington, United States. Cardinal Donald William Rowe, Archbishop of Washington, United States. I also welcome our family members and friends, and all the faithful who have accompanied them to them. The College of Congress, whose origin is linked to the ancient College of the Roman Church, is charged with electing the successor of Peter and advising him in matters of great importance. Only two of the ancient churches in Rome dedicated to St. Peter. The Basilica of St. Peter in the Vatican is the most famous. Now the second ancient church has been entrusted to the shepherd's care of Cardinal Whirl. I was absolutely thrilled. Uh, as you know, each cardinal receives a titular church uh, in Rome. He becomes the nominal pastor, and that's his title to vote in the election of the Pope. And to receive the other Petrine church in Rome was really a, a great thrill. The, uh, the relics of those chains that bound him when he was imprisoned uh, are there. So there's a tie. There's a tie to the very root of the faith in Rome. And there's a reminder that living out the faith doesn't always come easily. At the altar of the chair in St. Peter's Basilica, Cardinal Whirl celebrated his first public mass as a new cardinal. It was at this same altar that he was ordained a bishop nearly 25 years earlier, 
and a priest 44 years ago. Now Cardinal Whirl could bring family and friends from across the world to join him in thanking the Vicar of Christ for elevating him to the College of Cardinals. This basilica, this altar of the chair and this confessional have particular poignancy for me. 44 years ago, I was ordained a priest at that very chapel, altar, and chair. And 25 years ago, I was ordained a bishop at the altar of the confessional. And you were with me on Saturday when at that same altar, the Holy Father invited me into the College of Cardinals. There is, for each of us, a poignancy to this basilica. I was asked by a number of people as late as this afternoon, would you bless these metals? Would you bless this rosary? I want to bring these back. I want to take these home with me and give them to people as a remembrance of this pilgrimage, of these holy moments. Each one of us, each one of us carries with us souvenirs. Souvenirs from this visit. Beautiful, wondrous, intangible, spiritual souvenirs. We're renewed in our faith. Isn't that one of the souvenirs we take with us? Something we can carry with us, a renewal in our personal faith in the Lord Jesus and his resurrection. And we're renewed in our faith in the church, the body of Christ, the touchstone of our salvation. And we're renewed in our faith in the vicar of Christ, who walks among us, who actually came to visit us, and we now return the visit here. Wonderful gifts to take with us as we return home. And as all souvenirs are meant to be shared, to be given to others as reminders, may the faith renewed, restored, energized in us be something we carry back and we simply share with others, telling them the good news. Jesus is risen. Jesus is with us. God loves us, and the power of his kingdom, the power of those keys, continues to be at work in his church. A closing dinner offered Cardinal Whirl and the Washington Pilgrims one last chance to celebrate the special experience they had shared at the consistory in Rome. Thank you for being the very heart of this, this pilgrimage. There are lots of things we've done. There are an awful lot of places we visited, a huge amount of time at table, and a wonderful amount of time in Bulgaria. What made all of this such a beautiful, beautiful experience was your presence. Without you, and all of the joy that your presence, and all of the memories that your presence represents, it would have been nowhere near what this pilgrimage means. I have been so deeply, deeply blessed. I want to say to everybody who is here as a part of this celebration, thank you for making it such a rich and wonderful time. God bless you. brought us here so that we might be able to celebrate Peter in his continuing life and service and ministry in the person of his successor, Benedict XVI. 
of living witness to Jesus Christ continues to speak to us today. From that chair echoes Christ's voice. With a Roman heart on that Roman altar, the reminder, Jesus Christ is risen. Jesus Christ will come again. And in the meantime, we simply echo him in all that we say and do. What a beautiful way to conclude our pilgrimage and what a wonderful souvenir to take with us. Renewed in faith, confident in hope, and bathed in the love of the risen Lord.